Welcome to another video, Tommy from Tanknitions here. And before we get into the meat and potatoes of this particular video, I wanna give you a quick update on the aquarium that we did a fendabendazole treatment on for Xenia. And you can see there's no Xenia left. So the treatment worked and all the fish and corals were fine with the exception of the leathers. So remember that big red finger leather that we had in the front here? That basically totally died off. Uh, we thought it had completely died off and then these three pieces started growing and there's another one on the sand as well. So that will, I mean, it's a fast growing coral. It'll fill that space again over the next few months. Everything else though is exploding with growth. These mushrooms are doing really well. The zoanthids, they were probably a fifth of the size before because they were competing with the Xenia for space and nutrients. Now they're getting brighter and they're growing extremely quickly. All of the LPS corals are doing really well. These trumpets, the uh, Micromusa in the back there, the Duncans have really great polyp extension. So we couldn't be happier with the progress of this tank right now and we're finally starting to get nitrates. Uh, this red Ganiapora, Ganiapora is one of my favorite corals. It's probably tripled in size. These red mushrooms, I'm so excited about these red mushrooms. They were pastel colored before and they were staying small and now they're growing. Every time I see them, they're bigger and more colorful. We added some SPS. This is a ORA Tricolor Velita. That's a great beginner SPS coral and it's probably doubled in size over the past month and a half. And we're getting nice blue tips on that. The coloration in general has improved substantially since we did this treatment. You can see how deep and vibrant the purples are on this Montipora Capricornis. And here's a full tank shot in which you can see that the tank is rocking. So the rest of this video is going to be the first episode of our new series, Fish Philosophy Fridays. In this episode, we're going to be going over uh, realistic expectations for new hobbyists, um, how you should think about a reef tank, and... Um, how to go from point A to a reef like this. Welcome to Fish Philosophy Fridays. This is a new series that we're introducing where we try to kind of reframe the way that we think about aquariums. And I think that this is especially helpful for a lot of you in the comments that are thinking of setting up your first reef tank because until you've kept a reef tank, you really don't know everything that goes into it. And one of the hardest things about helping someone set up a reef tank, we have a lot of experience with this, when we worked in retail and now currently doing service and installations is getting people to understand, I mean, not to reiterate, but all the things that are involved. It's a very complex and nuanced hobby. And what I like to tell people is that saltwater reef tanks function a lot more like ecosystems than they do a freshwater aquarium that you might've kept before. But this analogy misses the mark in a lot of ways because most people don't have a full understanding of what an ecosystem is. It's a very abstract concept for people who aren't like actively involved in the academics of it. And probably the people who are involved in the academics of it, when I say it functions more like an ecosystem, I bet they look at me like, uh, what does this guy know about ecosystems? So I've been thinking about this a lot and how to uh, help people understand the nuance. And I think a good analogy would be to think of it like, uh, you know, when we go to the doctor or to the hospital for some kind of ailment, um, because there are a lot of parallels there. So for instance, if you imagine a reef tank like you would a person and you go to the doctor uh, for some symptom, a lot of times the doctors have to run additional tests. They might prescribe a certain medication for you uh, and it may or may not work. In fact, I think doctors get it wrong like 20 or 30% of the time which I mean is understandable, um, but we also know a lot more about the human body than we do reef tanks. So a uh, big thing is that for new hobbyists, this hobby punishes stubbornness and it punishes a lack of patience. So one of the biggest things that you can do is be patient and be understanding of the fact that it is a process to get from point A to the reef tank that you were looking at in the beginning of this video. So for example, I've gotten this question a lot work in retail where people will come in, they'll show me a picture on their phone of some random algae and they'll ask me how to get rid of that. 
expecting there to be a singular cause and solution for the general algae problem. And if you went to a doctor for a cough and a runny nose, you know, it could be a number of different things. It could be a cold, coronavirus, you could have lung involvement, it could just be allergies. Um, it's the same exact thing with a reef tank. That algae that you have can be caused by a whole host of different things. You might not have enough cleanup crew. Your nutrients might be out of balance. You might have too much organic waste. Um, maybe there's not enough flow. Maybe you have too high of nutrients or even too low of nutrients. So it's a process and you need to start with, or generally you'll start with the most likely cause and then you'll move down the list and you'll also adjust your husbandry based on the types of animals that you have and it all kind of feeds into itself. But I guess really what we're talking about here is that reef keeping is a process and it's something that you should be aware of before you start your first tank. Even heavy hitters in the hobby, when they set up a new aquarium, it's a process getting from point A to the tank that you saw in the beginning of this video and every other beautiful reef tank that you've looked at online or seen in person. Um, and they go through that process, you coming in as a beginner, also needing to learn all of the husbandry skills involved with getting the tank to that point, it's gonna take you a little bit longer. So when we set up a fish tank for someone, we usually tell people to expect the first six months to go through various stages of algae. And then the next six months is still just general maturing. And really your tank doesn't fully settle in and become uh, self-sustaining is the wrong word, but really come into its own until between a year or two after you've set it up. So these are some realistic expectations that you can have when you're setting up your tank. Um, we're gonna give you a bunch of like how-to videos also, but this is something that I, I never really see in fish keeping videos. There's a ton of how to do water changes, how to gravel back, but not a lot of information like this. And that's what this whole series is gonna be about. So um, anyway, thank you for watching. And for those of you who have kept reef tanks in the past or are currently keeping them, I would love to hear from you in the comments, letting us know what you wish you knew before you set up your first tank. Um, and we'll go through in the comments, me, Chris, John, uh, jive with you, love to learn from your experience and vice versa. So yeah, Fish Philosophy Fridays. Stay tuned. Look at those. Not a bad way to end a week. Hey, thanks for watching that video. That was a Rosiette Spoonbill and Associates. We also got a nice big old gator chilling in the water here. He's probably about as tall as I am. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you like our content, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and also hit the bell. Thanks for watching.